Step back into the glamour of the bygone era with the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. This timeless cinematic gem, released in 1939, unfolds the captivating narrative of a dance-loving couple whose passion and talent transcend the boundaries of their time. What makes this movie a lasting symbol in the industry, its enduring qualities begs exploration. As we delve into the enchanting world of the Castle couple, we invite you to reflect on your own connection with this cinematic masterpiece. Do you harbor a cherished memory associated with the film, a moment that has lingered in the recesses of your mind? But let's set the stage for the main act, a trove of intriguing facts about this classic. Did you know that the film is based on the real life story of Vernon and Irene Castle, influential figures in the world of dance during the early 20th century? Their impact on popularizing social dancing is etched in history. Now we're turning the spotlight on to you, dear reader. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic journey? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Embrace the magic of a bygone era where dance, love, and the silver screen converged in the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. In the 1939 film, the story of Vernon and Irene Castle, one notable aspect is the character Maggie Sutton, portrayed by Edna May Oliver. Interestingly, Maggie is based on the openly lesbian manager Elizabeth Marbury, a companion of Elsie DeWolf, also known as Lady Mendel. The film, adhering to the post-1934 Hayes Code's strict stance on on-screen homosexuality, sidesteps Marbury's lesbianism, presenting her as an asexual figure. In contrast to her meek on-screen persona, Irene Castle, played by the lead actress, was a remarkably outspoken and independent individual. Beyond her film roles, she took on swashbuckling action characters akin to Douglas Fairbanks, as seen in her role in the 1917 serial Patria. Off-screen, Castle stood out as a pioneering entrepreneur, designing her own costumes and shrewdly crafting her public image, transforming herself into a household brand. Another noteworthy element is the presence of Roy Darcy, who played screen villains during the silent era. The story of Vernon and Irene Castle marks Darcy's final film, concluding a career that included memorable roles in films such as The Merry Widow and Bardley's The Magnificent. The film, released in 1939, provides a glimpse into the lives of Vernon and Irene Castle with a narrative that navigates around the constraints of the Hayes Code. Through characters like Maggie Sutton and the transformation of Irene Castle, the movie reflects the societal norms and cinematic limitations of its time. The story of Vernon and Irene Castle, a 1939 film, marked a significant point in cinematic history. It served as the last collaboration of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers for a decade until the Barclays of Broadway. Astaire, however, expressed disappointment, feeling the movie failed to capture the lively essence of the ragtime era that characterized their previous works. French singer Jean Sablon initially turned down the role played by Louis Mercier, deeming it too small. Interestingly, his voice was eventually used on the soundtrack, adding a unique dimension to the film's audio. In contrast to its own narrative, critics viewed the story of Vernon and Irene Castle as a lackluster reinterpretation of the world of life, an earlier film featuring the real-life couple performing their iconic dance routines. The original is preserved in nitrate print at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City and is accessible on YouTube. As we delve into the layers of this cinematic piece, it becomes clear that despite its shortcomings, the film carries echoes of the castle's genuine grace as a couple, echoing a bygone era of dance and entertainment. Censorship in the late 1930s drastically altered the portrayal of the ragtime era in the film. The Hayes Code, strictly enforced since 1934, prevented an accurate depiction of the time. Joseph Breen, the censor, disallowed any honest reflection of the era's essence the bra-less flappers, the daring fashion, and the freer attitudes towards life. This censorship greatly affected the authenticity and historical accuracy of the movie. The film's narrative couldn't embrace the true essence of the vibrant period, curbing its portrayal of the free-spirited jazz age and its unconventional lifestyle. This strict oversight reshaped the movie's lens, steering it away from an authentic representation of the castle's era. Irene Castle, a technical advisor for the film, expressed dissatisfaction with the costumes, finding them anachronistic for the 1910s era. Ginger Rogers, portraying her, refused to alter her hairstyle to match the iconic bob Irene popularized. Despite Castle's objections, Fred Astaire's portrayal as Vernon Castle received her approval for his impeccable dancing and fitting into Vernon's old uniforms. 
This clash between historical accuracy and Hollywood's rendition highlights the struggles behind the scenes. The tension over authenticity versus cinematic interpretation underscores the complexities faced while bringing this iconic couple's story to the screen. Fred Astaire, portraying Vernon Castle in the 1939 film, had an age gap of a decade from the real Vernon, who passed away at 30. The movie opens with a disclaimer, hinting at its mix of fact and fiction, drawing from the lives of its leads and others. It weaves a narrative blending reality with invented elements. An intriguing behind-the-scenes tidbit involves Astaire's toupee slipping off during a scene where he rescues a drowning dog. This incident added a spontaneous, unplanned moment to the film. Such quirks often remain unseen in the final cut, yet they become anecdotes, revealing the human side of movie making. The film, while depicting the essence of the castle's lives, creatively combines reality and fiction for an engaging portrayal. The ninth and final collaboration between Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, the movie revolves around the true story of Vernon and Irene Castle. However, it's Irene Castle's objections that stand out. She criticized the casting choice for Walter Ashe, her lifelong companion and manservant, played by a white actor, Walter Brennan, contrary to Ashe's racial identity. Irene emphasized their history of touring with James Reese Europe's Society Orchestra, a black ensemble, rather than a white band depicted in the film. Despite her protests, studio decisions prevailed, catering to Southern U.S. theaters and altering historical accuracy. This led Irene Castle to disown the film due to its factual inaccuracies and conservative portrayal of their era. Unyielding Spirit The story of Vernon and Irene Castle's cast member unstoppable pursuit of dreams in the face of disease. During the production of the film, tragedy struck the cast as one member battled a severe illness. Despite this, their unwavering determination and commitment to the project shone through. This individual's resilience in pursuing their dreams amid such challenging circumstances became an inspiring testament to the human spirit. As the film progressed, their courage in facing adversity became a quiet yet powerful force behind the scenes. Their dedication to their craft and their unwavering pursuit of their aspirations despite the health battle showcased an unyielding spirit that resonated with those around them. Their impact on the set, despite the personal struggle, became a defining aspect of the film's production, inspiring fellow cast and crew members to persevere and give their best despite the challenges faced. The story of this cast member's unstoppable pursuit of their dreams in the face of disease stands as a testament to resilience and determination amidst adversity, adding a profound layer of inspiration to the narrative of the 1939 film. As we part ways, let's carry a piece of the charm and grace of Vernon and Irene Castle with us. Reflect on the sway of their dance, the elegance of their partnership of celluloid tale etched in time, inviting us to tap into our own connections with love, art, and history. Share your thoughts, unveil your cherished moments inspired by this cinematic gem. Let's weave our narratives into this timeless tapestry, for each perspective adds a new hue to the richness of this classic portrayal. Your memories, musings, and reflections could harmonize with others, creating an exquisite symphony of shared experiences. Thank you for engaging, for allowing the magic of Vernon and Irene Castle to resonate within you. Until we meet again, keep waltzing through life's myriad stories.